Hey, what is up guys? I'm KBHD here and well, welcome back to Techtober. The event that we were waiting for just wrapped up, which means I'm now allowed to share that my daily driver for the past couple days has been the brand new OnePlus 6T. So this phone's had a lot of hype leading up to it. We started seeing those specs and a little bit of design leaks and basically it got a lot of people waiting for this phone. So the OnePlus 6T is in the purest sense of the word, an incremental update. Most of it is the same as the OnePlus 6 that we're already familiar with, that I liked a lot. And then you could consider this a bit of a design refresh a couple months later. So they took the OnePlus 6, which is already a pretty solid and well-liked phone, and then made some upgrades and some tweaks to things that they felt could be better, and they took it up a notch. Okay, there's your notch pun for the video. So there are, conveniently, six new things with the OnePlus 6T. So first of all, the new display. It's bigger. It's a 6.4 inch display and still your 2340 by 1080 optic AMOLED they've been on for a while, and it's still pretty great. It's bright, it's colorful, and has a built-in adjustable color profiles. Obviously, I'm a big phone person and phone screens keep getting bigger, and I still love it. Also, slightly smaller chin than the OnePlus 6. Not drastically smaller, but you can see it when you put them side by side. So the display is definitely an improvement. And that brings us to number two. As you can see, the teardrop notch up here at the top. Everything OnePlus wanted to do with the fairly standard notch on the OnePlus 6, they are still doing in the smaller notch on this 6T, except for the notification LED. So up here is the front-facing camera, the earpiece, and the proximity and ambient light sensors. No fancy face ID, dot projector, or depth sensors or anything like that, but just a pretty solid basic couple things. They can still do their super fast facial recognition with the RGB camera that has its pros and cons. And the speaker is slotted way up here at the top, but it wasn't doing a whole lot anyway, so we're not missing out much by shoving a tiny speaker up there. And for a lot of people, including me, this is an improvement. Larger screen, closer to the bezels, and more room up top for notifications and info. But you can still hide the notch with software if you want to. The only weird feeling I got about it is like how curvy it is. Just, I mean, that's quite the curve from left to right. If you remember the Essential phone, that notch had probably about the same volume and total size, but it was pretty rectangular on the sides. This one is all slopey and then it just, it just touches the top of whatever app you're using in the middle. It's interesting, but you get used to it just like any other notch. Okay, number three, is the fingerprint reader underneath the display. Something, again, a lot of people were looking forward to. Happy to see this slowly starting to become more common in mainstream phones. So that OnePlus 6 a couple months ago had the fingerprint reader on the back. That's now gone and it's moved the logo up a little bit in its place. And you can now unlock your phone by just touching the glass. I've left it enabled the entire time I've been using it. And I'd say it's, it's faster than that first gen from the Vivo phone I first tested a couple months ago, but uh, still slower than the gold standard of like Touch ID or a lot of the physical fingerprint readers. It's just somewhere in between. It's not instant, but it's just a little beat of you unlocking your phone. It's, it's getting there. You can't really just touch your finger to the screen and then remove it quickly and get to using the phone. It'll still tell you you're going too fast, but if you leave it there for a, a beat, you're in pretty quick. The animation, is pretty corny, I think, and there's two others you can pick from in the software. Uh, but the thing is, they all happen at full brightness. That's part of how the tech of this optical fingerprint reader underneath the screen works. It involves shining a light on your fingerprint. So even though it's an OLED and they can keep all the pixels black and the clock is dim to save battery, the fingerprint reader, when it reads your finger, goes to max brightness, and at night that can be kind of annoying. Basically, I was hoping there could be an even more subtle animation than the three that were provided. Also, that means that unlocking the phone at night, or when it's dark specifically, is kind of annoying. I know it's definitely nitpicking at this point, but think about it. I have both face unlock and fingerprint unlock enabled. At night, when it's dark, the face unlock camera, which just uses the RGB camera, doesn't work very well. So you have to use the fingerprint, and then when you use the fingerprint, it shines that full brightness light that kind of bleeds around your finger into your face, which is kind of annoying. Just, I know that's, again, super minor, but this is the kind of stuff you notice when you use a phone every day, so I'll mention it. Number four is the new battery. So while the phone is pretty much the same size, this is OnePlus's biggest improvement on paper, going from a 3300 to a 3700 milliamp hour battery. That has been awesome in practice for the endurance of this phone. The six was already pretty good, but I'm now getting pretty consistently five plus hours of screen on time. One of the days I had nearly six hours with 10% left. 
So it might not be a 4,000 milliamp hour cell, like it isn't the biggest number on paper, but this improvement, thanks to the 1080p OLED and pretty clean software, has this basically my battery champ this year so far, and it still has that incredibly fast, fast charging. So that is impressive. Then number five, uh, it's true, the headphone jack is now gone on the 6T. Even OnePlus is getting rid of the headphone jack. A moment of silence for its loss. So yeah, it's 2018, pretty much only Samsung and LG are left still riding that headphone jack train. And it's kind of interesting coming from a company like OnePlus who we know to usually be first to listen to what users want. So when I asked them what their reasoning was for not having a headphone jack, cause I got to ask them directly, they said it's the larger battery and the fingerprint reader under the screen both take up so much extra space in this same size phone that they felt it made sense to get rid of the headphone jack. So. That's their words. And the number six new different thing is probably the best news. This phone starts at 128 gigs of storage now instead of 64 and for the same exact price as the last one, 549. So you get twice as much storage for the same starting price and this whole new design. So OnePlus is sure sticking to their guns of competitive pricing. And then that's it. Every, everything else about the OnePlus 6T in the software, on the surface, under the hood, materials and build, it's all the same as that OnePlus 6. Same Oxygen OS on top of Android Pie with the new gestures and all the new features OnePlus has been throwing in. Same smoothness and A plus performance that I was so happy about a couple months ago that drew me away from the Pixel. Same Snapdragon 845 and six or eight gigs of RAM, so I expect it to continue to be smooth. Same colors, so it's launching with this midnight black or mirror black, which means you may still wanna to toss on a skin from our sponsor, Dbrand. This matrix black they have happens to look pretty damn good, and now you won't see nearly as many fingerprints, so kind of a win-win there. And OnePlus still took the shortcuts they took last year, so no wireless charging, for example, even though it's a glass back phone. And it's the same exact camera, the hardware, sensor and lens and everything as the OnePlus 6. So you can see photos from last year's phone. They are gonna start to look better with each round of software updates. They're learning a lot from Pixel and iPhone's HDR techniques and building them in here. Plus a new night mode is here that does more with longer exposures and dark scenes. But of course, all these changes are also coming to the exact same OnePlus 6 camera, since it's just a software change. And they kept, of course, one of the most important things about the 6, which was the starting price. Easy recommendation, this is a great phone. Now it's also coming with Verizon compatibility, and they're gonna start working with T-Mobile. You'll see it in T-Mobile stores, I'm assuming. So this is gonna be making its first big push into carriers in the US, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, there's a lot going for this phone. It's continued to impress me even though they got rid of the headphone jack, which is a bummer for a lot of people, but it's been impressive how much they stick with the fast and smooth mantra through their phones. These have been consistently the fastest phones I use for the past couple years, which is great, and that's a function of how much they care about software. So I have no problem recommending OnePlus 6T. This is just the OnePlus 6 in a prettier, higher tech package with a bigger battery for the same price. Can't really go wrong there. So. That's been it. What do you think? Is this your next phone? Let me know. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.